let's see what happens when we create a deployment on Kubernetes. So I do kubectl create deployment and <clears throat> So that's my control plane in the middle. Uh, that big cylinder here, that means storage, so that's etcd. I have two nodes on the right, and then I uh, run my kubectl create command. Um, so you will see that on each step, the, um, the components that are active kind of light up in red. Uh, so I talk to the API server, the API server talks to etcd and creates the deployment, like puts the deployment in etcd. And then it tells me deployment created. Note that uh, when the control plane tells me deployment created, my container is not running at all. This is, this is like when I put the order at the restaurant, they're like, yep, we got it. Now the kitchen is going to work on that, but I don't have my blue cheeseburger yet. So next step, um, I have a controller that wakes up, the controller responsible for deployments. And basically it's like, oh, what's a deployment? A deployment is a replica set, you know, just like a, a T is an infusion of tea leaves, whatever. Deployment is a replica set. Uh, do we have a replica set yet? No? Okay, let's create the replica set. So the deployment controller is going to create the replica set and then it goes back to sleep. Then at the next step, the replica set controller, like the controller responsible for replica set wakes up and it's like, ah, I see that you have a replica set. Uh, it says that you want to have, you know, like um, uh, one Nginx. Okay, sorry, that paper says uh, three, but let's pretend it's one. So you want to have one uh, Nginx pod. Fine, let's create the pod and let's go back to sleep. Again, at that point, when we say create the pod, that's just an entry in etcd. We don't have an actual container running on the cluster yet. So now we have a pod that is in state pending. Pending means it's kind of queuing outside of the cluster because we don't know yet where it's gonna run. Next, we have another controller that wakes up, a special one, the scheduler. Remember from yesterday, the scheduler is our Tetris player responsible for optimizing the placement of the, the containers like as tightly as possible. And so it has to decide on which node uh, the pod will be running. So it's going to look at all kinds of factors. Uh, how much RAM do you need? How many CPUs? Do you have placement constraints? Do you want to be in the same ability zone as another thing or whatever? It's like, no, no constraints at all. Okay, and what's running currently on the cluster? Nothing. All right, I'm going to arbitrarily decide that you go on node one. And then the scheduler goes back to sleep. Next step, we have kubelet on node one. Remember again from what I was telling you yesterday, the job of kubelet is to register with the control plane and say, hello, I'm node one, uh, do you have any containers for me? And at that point, the control plane says, well, precisely, I have an Nginx pod for you. So kubelet is going to update the manifest here to say creating, basically saying I'm working on it. Uh, it's going to pull the image, allocate the IP address, start the containers, and when everything is running, it's going to report back and mark the pod as running. And at this point, we have truly created our container, our deployment, I mean. Well, we, we had created the deployment, but at that point, we have kind of reconciled and it's, it's truly up and running. So all these steps I was showing you, you know, like uh, the pods being like uh, pending and creating, etc. This is exactly what's going on and I'm going to prove it. I'm going to run kubectl get pods dash o wide. And I'm going to add two really inter interesting flags, dash dash watch, dash dash output watch events. Uh, there we go. So, mm -hmm. and now I'm going to do kubectl create deployment web with image nginx. 
and you will see here all these events happening. So first it's pending, then it's pending, but it's now on a node, then it's container creating, and then a few seconds later, it's running with an IP address. So that's what's going on, what's happening when we uh, create a deployment on Kubernetes.